Canva have finally responded. After all of that kind of drama, it was such unnecessary drama, if you ask me, but they've responded now. I've messaged them many, many times in the last week to try and get them to respond faster, but I do understand they're a huge company and they have to do things in a certain way, especially they need the legal team to kind of make sure that it's all okay because they don't want to go into they don't want to run into the same problem but anyway they have just responded i have just turned the camera on turned the light on and i'm just creating a video because i'm going to go through the response with you and i'm going to give you some examples and just clear everything up but what i want to do is i want to explain this response and kind of make it even more simplified so you know exactly what you can and what you cannot do with print on demand so let's have a look. This is the response. Guide to using Canva to create digital and physical products for sale. They have the simple version and then they have the detailed version. We'll go to the detailed version because we really want to know if, if it's okay. Um, and if you don't know what's going on, uh, I made a video a couple of days ago, a week ago at this point, um, just talking about whether or not you could use Canva for print on demand, the, the, the graphics, the fonts and different elements and the templates, because there was a post on the Facebook group and it just sent everyone into a spiral of, can you do this and can you do that? And a lot of people canceled their accounts. So I just wanted to put this out there because I personally love using Canva. And if you're allowed to use Canva, then we should continue to use it because it's simple, it's cheap, and it's, it's just really useful. There's so many graphics. So let's find out what we can and what we cannot do. So creating a unique design using Canva content. If you wanna create a product you can sell, it needs to be an original design. What does this mean? So if you're using any free or pro, this is good because we were thinking that maybe the pro content wasn't allowed, but only the free was allowed and everyone was like, well, why would we have a pro account if we can't use it? Well, actually, if you're using a free or pro, if you're using any free or pro content in a design that you want to sell, it just needs to be an original design. And this means using the content with a combination of design elements such as images, videos, audio files, or other media text, illustrations, background features, and editing techniques to make the, the, the new creative artwork, make it new. So you cannot sell uh, Canva content on a standalone basis. And this means you can't take an element from the Canva library, such as a photo or a single graphic, and put it on a t-shirt and sell it. This is not a design, this is just, you know, ripping off uh, a designer who has created that and you're just selling it now. You need to make it your own. So when will the use of content be considered standalone? So using the content in its original form solely using a filter or changing the colors or resizing or cropping or outlining the content is not good enough. So if we go here and we go to Canva, just to show you an example, let's say there's an element here and we want to let's say we do mountains, you know, let's say we do this. Apparently, according to Canva, we cannot sell it like this. We just, we can't. Now, not only can we not sell it like this, we can't go into here and make that pink, make that black, make that yellow. Now, this is actually interesting because I thought this was allowed, but apparently this is not allowed because even though you've changed the colors, you haven't done much to it. What you would need to do is actually change it. So let's say, you know, we add a, a sun over there and position that sun, let's say, behind, and then we'd add some text, right? And in the text, we'd say something like mountains. I, I don't know, this is not a design that I would ever sell. And then we'd use like, you know, let's say we use a, a, a font or whatever because that's allowed right and now you can see how this design I'm using a mixture of different elements um, let's we can make it even more and, and now it's like a unique design in a way right now on top of that we can also go in and um, edit the image so you know you can add a, a, a pixelation kind of thing if you wanted to and you can do all of that now Canva do say that just using a filter, so if I just added the pixelation, that's not enough, right? Or just changing the colors or just resizing or just cropping or outlining the content on a single piece is not enough. You need to add additional design elements um, to actually make it unique. So what I've done here would be considered okay. I don't know, I don't really want to, to do this pixelation thing, but what I've done here would technically be okay. And we can go in here, we can kind of change this as well to make it 
also unique if we really wanted to. Uh, I don't know, let's just make it purple. It's a purple sun, right? And that 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 is okay. Now let's move on. So, special conditions, and just so you know, that that clears a lot up for a lot of people because this goes to show we can use Canva pro or free elements for our designs, which is brilliant. It's, it's amazing. Right, special conditions for using pro content in templates and products for sale. So templates, I'm not so bothered about, but in case you are, here's an example. So a wedding invitation is a template. And because you need to fill, it, fill out the details of the event in order to use it. Now, an ebook is not a template because it is a finished product that doesn't require further editing by the end user in order to use it. So if you want to use pro content in electronic publications, including eBooks, the publication needs to be designed using Canva. You can't download pro content from Canva and use it to design your eBook in another software. This is really cool. So it's actually interesting. It's not cool at all. You can't download Canva content and use Photoshop and put it together for some reason for, for, for an eBook. Um, and then on top of that, you have to stick to the 400,000 pixel limit if you are using a standalone image for your ebook, let's say. So example scenarios. Now this was brilliant. This really helped massively. Jenny is a nutritionist, right? And she wants to design an ebook in Canva to sell her to, to her clients. Jenny uses stock photos from the Canva library throughout her ebook. This is allowed under the content license agreement as long as Jenny sticks to the maximum pixel limit of 400,000 for any unedited images she uses. Now, another one, templates. Zahir is a template designer who specializes in invitations. He wants to use Canva to design a wedding invitation. He can create those templates using Canva Pro content. This is allowed. But if he wants to sell them, he has to sell them as Canva template links. Now, what else? So if he uses free content um, and photos, Zahir has taken himself and uploaded to Canva, so he's taken some photos. He can. He is allowed under the content license agreement to sell these templates as a PDF or uh, Canva template link. So if you use your own photos and you're just using Canva as the, the, the catalyst to design and to put it all together, you can do whatever you want with that kind of stuff. Digital clip art, um, not so worried about this. Basically, you cannot, under any circumstances, take the clip art standalone from Canva and create your own stock image. Uh, create your own stock website, I should say. You can't sell Canva's uh, 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 graphics. Uh, but that makes sense, and that's always been in the terms, so there's, there's no confusion there. Now, T-shirts and printed products. John wants to create a T-shirt and mug designs and sell them using print-on-demand. John uses a mixture of graphics and fonts to create his original designs. This is allowed. Yes, this is really, really good. This is huge. It's amazing because this puts Canva back on the map. Anyone who counts their pro account, you could go, go back and get it. There'll be links in the description to everything if you want it. Not that I care about the affiliate stuff. I'm making this update because I want everyone to know. But it's really good to know that people can use Canva, right? Pro or free. Nadia wants to, uh, to design and sell posters using print on demand. Her design consists of a single photo with a border around it. That is not allowed. Nadia cannot use pro or free photos from Canva for her post design because it would be considered standalone use. There's no, there's no changes, there's no uniqueness. Is that a word, uniqueness? Because it should be, it's a really cool word. There's no uniqueness, I'm gonna say it's a word, to her, her picture. Now, Nadia can use her own photos that she uploads to Canva to create these posters because she owns the copyright in her photos. So she can use Canva as the editing platform and put her own photos in it and, and that's absolutely fine. Printables. Okay, let's say you want to design some stickers. Now this is also really self-explanatory, but let's say you have basketball and you create a sheet of 20 basketball stickers and you don't do anything else to it. You cannot sell those as stickers because they are technically standalone images. Even though you've got 20 of them on one sheet, they are just 20 standalone images. What you can do is, let's say you create a sticker sheet that consists of 20 inspirational quotes and you've typed it out using Canva fonts, the stickers can be downloaded and flattened as a PDF or individual PNG files. This is absolutely fine. If you create unique stickers and you create a sheet of unique stickers, that's absolutely fine. What you can't do is you can't just take the stickers, take, take graphics and then sell them as stickers. Now, if you wanna do something like that, you can actually go and buy the licensing to certain things. I, I think Vexels might be okay or Creative Fabric, but there are other platforms where you can buy graphics and sell them. With Canva, you can't do that. You need to edit it. Right, selling a product based on Canva's template. So Blake wants to design a sell children's book, a children's book. They start their book design with Canva's template. This is allowed under the content license agreement, as long as Blake is not selling the template as is. 
This means that Blake needs to populate the book template with their own content and add their own creative effort so the book design is unique to Blake, okay? Creating designs for clients. So as if, if you're a freelancer and you wanna create social media posts or something like that, you can use a mixture of pro or free content in your social media posts and this is allowed. You just have to make sure you transfer the rights of the social media post to your client. Um, you have to make sure your, your, your client complies with the content license agreement and you can only transfer the design to one client. You can't transfer or sell the design multiple times. Now, frequently asked questions. This was a big, big, this was a big thing because there was there's so many frequently asked questions here. So do I own the copyright in designs I create on Canva? Generally speaking, if you are the creator of an original design, you're also the copyright holder. But if you use third party content, stock content from the Canva library in your design, your ownership is subject to those third party rights. Canva gives you non-exclusive license to use stock content in your designs, including photos, graphics, videos, fonts, and music for a range of permitted uses, which includes a, a ability to sell certain types of designs that, con uh, that contains content. So the print on demand service I'm using to print my t-shirt designs requires me to confirm that I am the copyright owner of the design. Can I do that? No, you can't do that. Some third party services may require to agree that you own the copyright in a design you upload to their service. If that's the case, you can't use Canva's content because you do not own the copyright of that content. You only have a license to it. If the print on demand service only requires to agree that you have the right to use your design, then that's absolutely fine. Full steam ahead, you can go and use Canva. You're responsible for checking the terms of the third party website. Canva is obviously not liable. If you use the magic edit to change certain components of a photo, can it be sold? No, simply put no. Um, and that's just because, yes, you could technically edit a photo and manipulate it so that it looks completely different, but because it's hard to gauge um, from certain people to other people how much editing they're going to do with this magic editing tool, they've just done a blanket no. Completely fair, I understand. Um, what rules apply if I want to sell an image I've created using text to image? You can do that, no problem whatsoever. And that's it, really, really straightforward. So to summarize, this design, can't really do much with that. I can't really sell it. I've just taken this template and I, there's nothing to do. I can't do anything with it. Can't really sell that on print on demand. Whereas this one, I have changed this completely. I've changed the sun. I've added the sun. I've added the word mountains. I can sell that absolutely fine. Long story short, Canva is okay to use. This is brilliant. This is amazing. And I would recommend using it because Canva, Kittle, all of these platforms are really, really good. But the reason I like Canva is because it's the library, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of graphics, thousands of fonts. It's a huge, huge platform. And it was a real shame when for a minute there, we thought we couldn't use it. But now that they've come out with this and it's so simple, they, they've really, they've done a good job. And I know it took them a week, but it's, it was worth the wait because it's now really straightforward, really simple to understand. And, ah. Oh, I'm just so happy that we can use Canva for print on demand. And I know it's gonna make a lot of people happy. So by the way, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, my name is Shimi Morris. I know I'm saying this at the end of the video, but my name is Shimi Morris. I create content all about print on demand and I try to help you get sales and create designs and all that kind of things. So smash that subscribe button. Let's see if we can get to 100,000 subscribers, why not? And yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think of this update. How does this make you feel? Does it make you feel elated and excited about print on demand and using Canva? Or are you kind of annoyed? Let me know in the comments.